Hello, this is the Kemble Concerto. It's just come into stock, so I want to appraise the piano and uh, see if there's any work that we might need to do to refine it. But I'm very pleased with the piano in general. It's practically perfect casework, um, and it's called Light Oak, so that's a, a veneer finish and very tasteful. It's unusual to get oak coloured pianos, so we're pleased to get it in for that reason. It's right next to uh, a more traditional colour, shall we say, mahogany, and this is a Kemble Oxford, very similar piano. We're going to contrast the two of them, or compare the two of them, so you can get some idea uh, what the oak one is like. Well, the casework is really perfect, I can't find any defects on it at all. So it's as new, um, the piano has not been played that much either. One thing I've mentioned before about this model of later Kembles is the, the legroom is 64 centimetres, normal legroom is about 61, 61.5. So if you're a tall person, that's ideal. The pedals are 7 centimetres, same as any other modern piano, so it's very comfortable if you've got long legs. Now the Kemble Oxford has actually got 66 centimetres uh, here and the pedal's about the same height. I mention this because a lot of uh, tall people do find it difficult to fit under the keyboard of pianos. This is a typical Yamaha U1 for example, 60.5 60 centimetres and the pedal's about the same height. Now internally it's just perfect, it's like a new piano, no, no real difference. The tone won't be any different from a new piano either, except the piano's been played in a bit, which means you can uh, look, at, look at the voicing. So in some respects, a piano that's played in a bit, and if you look at the hammers, you can see hardly any indentation on them. Uh, so I, that's given me an opportunity to voice the hammers and uh, to voice them down slightly, because I think they're a bit bright. So when voicing, you normally play semitones and and there's a brighter one that that's a D D sharp sorry so I'm going to voice that down a bit so voicing is done by gently opening up the felt and uh, no no more than one, about 1.5 millimeters depth and and, and just o opening up the felt a bit on the end if you go too deep then you destroy the hammer which is obviously not a good idea if you go only 1.5 and you've overdone it you can always just reface with a bit of sandpaper and get back to the original tone but yeah, obviously you get used to doing this so I'm, I need two hands normally for this obviously but I want to try and show you on the video so playing the D and D sharp to get them the same tone, obviously you don't want to go too too mellow, though if you want it a lot more mellow that's possible as well. Now it has the advantage of a Celeste, so if you want to practice um, and you don't want to disturb people so much then you can put the Celeste down. That's what a scale would normally sound like and with the Celeste you put your foot down on the middle pedal and push it sideways and then you get now you can get silent pianos these days, I, personally I don't really like to supply silent pianos. Uh, the electronics tends to go wrong after a few years and um, and really to play with the silent you could just as well get a digital piano and put that somewhere else in the house. So the piano is very much like it was when it was new. Um, not really any different tone wise I wouldn't say except I found it a bit bright and that might be because it's played in and opportunity to voice it down a little bit. Um, and it's one owner from you, so uh, that's useful. And that's the original price. And I've got the, the original receipt too to show that, uh, which I'll show you if you are interested in purchasing the piano. So excellent instrument. So voicing, weighing the keys, we always mention this, to make it just like a new piano. Uh, it's a little bit varied. We've lubricated um, the balance rail, so that's something we'd normally do. And then afterwards we uh, just want to get the keys even. So we're going to weight them so they're as even as a new piano, plus or minus two grams is what we had managed to achieve, which is similar to what a new piano is. We're really pleased with the colour of this piano. We're pleased to say also they seem to move away from black pianos, which is encouraging because black pianos are basically done that way because it's the cheapest. Um, but it may be us that's uh, uh, noticing that change because we're trying to promote non-black pianos. Um, but we're really pleased to be able to sell pianos that uh, we, we feel are made with tremendous integrity. So let's compare the tone with some other pianos. And this is the Kemble Oxford. I didn't say much about this piano in the end, because it's so similar really. There's nothing much to say in, in terms of it being different. One year difference, 2007, or maybe, perhaps, maybe less than a year difference. This is a Knight K6 1972.
That's a Campbell Concerto made in 2008, which was one of the last pianos made in the Campbell factory, or the last run of pianos. And these later Campbells, we think are the best, really. The Campbell's huge variety, by the way, uh, in the UK, you'll find lots of Campbell pianos. They're very small mini pianos. We don't recommend because the action's too small for, for learning on. They can sound very good, but uh, the touch is very difficult to control. So that's quite important to know, really. But these later Campbells, they're very tall, a uh, lot of legroom, rather, um, which is really useful. And uh, we like to source them partly for that reason, but also the, t the tone is excellent. They did make Yamaha pianos as well. Personally, I really like the Campbell pianos. Um, the, the touch is excellent, and the tone is perhaps a little bit bright sometimes. So we like to voice the tone, the voice the panels down a bit especially after it's been played in. If you're interested in the piano, please do write to us, info at robertspianos.com. Thank you very much for listening. Thank mm -hmm. you.